You guys seem to love my last video looking at the five best players to use in Inazuma 11 Victory Road Beta. And so today, I thought we should have a look at five more players that you should consider using in your Victory Road team. And the focus today is on underrated players. And what I mean by that is players who the casual player may not have realized are actually viable competitively. Whether they have a really good passive you might not have realized, or maybe their stats are so much better than you would have expected. Without further ado, let's just dive straight into it. And make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. I promise not every player on this list is going to be a Breach player, but right now it is the best strat in the game, so I am gonna recommend some players who can help you make your Breach bonus as high as possible. And first up is Faerun. Now playing Faerun up front, isn't really the way to go. At the end of the day, his moves are Bouncing Bunny and Dance on Air. As a striker, that's not particularly inspiring, but as a midfielder, you can make it work. And the reason you want to make Faerun work is because of his passive that you get when you make him legendary, which is that the, your team breach rate goes up by 30%. That's 30% of the 10% that you already have, not it's, it goes up to like 40% overall. It goes up to... The max is 20%. It, it works out. I, the maths work out. But there you go. Faerun, a super unassuming player at first, with a really weak shot, actually has a bit of use. A similar player is Bomber. Bomber has Ignited Steel and Plasma Cut as his two moves, which actually makes him a pretty decent midfielder with a good block and a good dribble. Uh, but then when you look at his passives, this is where his true strengths start to be revealed. When even or trailing in goals, teams breach rate plus 30%. So it's like Fey Runes, but slightly weaker because it only works when you're drawing or losing. But it's still a really good passive to have because it's increasing that breach rate. And so Bomber goes from being someone you might completely ignore to someone who's going to be on a lot of teams. But I'm sure you're tired of hearing about breach right now. So let's talk about something a bit different and let's talk about Aitor. I'll be honest, Aitor's partly here because I just really like his design, but he also does have a bit of competitive use. Hunter's Net is a really good shot block, and shot blocks are super important in this game's meta, where it's all about getting your castle walls while you're defending. You get Aitor in front of someone's shot, obviously you can use Hunter's Net to try and block it. On top of that, Hunter's Net is wood, which if I understand shot block elemental advantages right, that means that he's good at blocking like Biolong's drag and drive and stuff, but I might be wrong about that. But there is a serious lack of fire forwards being used, which means Aethor is a really good defensive option and actually might be sometimes a better option to have than like Jack. On top of that, while I don't think any of his passives are particularly uh, meta, I like them. When tension is below 30%, damage to keeper points minus 15%. That just seems like a good one to have. On top of that, you got a bunch of stuff boosting your castle wall. He seems like a great defensive option. But going back to Breach, because we haven't talked about that enough, here's Wits. Let's get the obvious out of the way. One of Wits' passives is when even or trading in goals, team Breach rate plus 20%. That's reason enough to have him on your team. But what makes Wits even more interesting is that he is one of the highest kick stats in the game and get Supernova. And because Supernova is wood and Wits is wood, he's actually the only Supernova user who gets Stab off of it. Now, what lets Wits down is that there's no air goalkeepers for him to take advantage of. And if you come up against a Valen or Sam, then he is going to be weak against them. So he's not the best forward option when you could have, say, a front three of Biolong, Xanark, and Torch. But as a backup, as a, a bit of an underrated, underused forward option, he is really cool. If your opponent's rocking Mark or Darren, why don't you get him off your bench? Give him a go. And finally, let's talk about the actual best goalkeeping option in the game, Clea. That's a joke. Clea is not a particularly great goalkeeper, though she does get wormhole. No, what Clea is, is actually a really good defender. See, Clea has one of the highest pressure stats in the game and one of the highest intelligence stats in the game both of which are crucial stats for defenders to have. On top of that, she gets the tower, which is a great shot block. And we've already talked about how important shot blocks are. And if my theory is real, when I'm talking about elemental advantages playing into shot blocks, 
then the tower is going to do good against Disaster Strike. Clear's passives may not be anything particularly special or interesting, but as a defensive option, I think she's a really good one. And there you have it. Those are five underrated players that you may not have considered using, but perhaps you should. I want to see more teams with wits firing off supernovas up front. But if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you drop a like, comment, and subscription, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.